Great news. There's a quick way you can save money. Switch to GEICO. GEICO could help you get great coverage at a great price. And it only takes 15 minutes to see if you could save 15% or more on car insurance. Go to GEICO.com today and see how much you could save. Golgan Wingo with you on a Tuesday morning on ESPN Radio and ESPN2, presented by Progressive Insurance. All sh- all phone guests will join us on the Shell Pennzoil performance line. I got to say that slower, by the way. When you try and say Shell Pennzoil performance line fast, no good. Not you know what we have on this show? No. A lot of time. That's a fair point. Okay. A lot of time. I'm picking up on that. You know, I'm, I'm slowly getting up on that. Lengthen the words out. So, Michael, <laughs> glad you are here with By the us way, today. I'm mad at Allie for putting up the gift she did of me falling down in the woods. I think it's awesome. Yeah, at, at Golik and Wingo. I fell in the woods yesterday, walking the dogs, got tied up in the leashes, tried to hop over it because I was an athlete, found out I'm not anymore, and now I can't lift my arm over my head. Uh, luckily, it's the good shoulder. It's the one shoulder I only had three operations on, not that's the one the, that had the good shoulder, not the one that had seven. So yeah, I I fell landed on the good shoulder, and I'm hoping uh it'll start to feel better soon. But right now, sleep didn't come well last night, and I'm out of pain pills. Oh, I need well. a new stash. Yeah, well, I don't need to know about yeah. that. <laughs> I don't need to know about where you get your pain pill stash. There's a line of demarcation of things I want to know about. You find Doctor Needle a day or something, oh, man. My Holy God. smokes! Did you go to a doctor yet? No. Not going to a doctor. Listen, I've had 10 surgeries on these two shoulders. I have a good feeling about wh- how hurt they are when they're hurt. This guy sprained it. it. I landed on the elbow, jammed up into the shoulder, sprained Am it. Am I going to have to carry your luggage at the airport today? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Man. I'd like you to put my baggage in overhead, if you don't mind. Because yeah, you can't lift your shoulder. Can't lift my arm. That's, that's how this is going to go. Yes, We're going to get is. on the plane together, probably sitting <clears throat> next to each other. You know what you're going to hear out of me? Yeah. Trey, would you would you please put this bag Trey, up? It's heavy. Trey, my bag, and then halfway through the trip, can Trey. you get it down for me? I cannot reach my bag over my shoulder. Yes, we have become seventy a seventy year old. Yes, couple. we have overnight. Just yes, like we have. that, because we already eat dinner at four thirty in the afternoon. So on that I can't confirm. <laughs> But, you know, you get a really good deal. You get a really good deal hey, when you go me? that early. Mm-hmm. Holy mother. Okay, Golligan Wingo presented yeah. by Progressive Insurance. Drivers who switch to Progressive can save an average of $620. Bucks. Uh, by the way, speaking of Progressive, I, I found this tweet today simultaneously sad and happy. Uh, Tiger Woods, after his uh, top 23 showing at the uh, Farmers Insurance Open at Torrey Pines. How much did he jump up? He moved up to 539 in the world rankings. Wow. So and it's 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 movement. But man, I, I don't know what. Well, he remember he was over eleven hundred. How the might he have point. fallen? I, and I don't know how how quickly you can move up those. But I wonder how quickly he will move up those into yeah. you know the the top one hundred, top. 50. Is he going to get there again? Uh, well, you, how, yeah. let me ask you this: How high do you think he will get in the rankings for the rest of his career? For the rest of his career, or just this year? No, no, no. For the re- for as long as he's, he's going, he's going to soar this year because he's had nothing. Right. Over the last couple of years. Understood. So that's going to replace but, all but those zeros pretty quickly. We also don't know long, how much longer he's going to play for. Now, yeah. it could, if, if he's feeling healthy, he could play for a long time. I think he has the potential to be in the top 20 in the world again. My top belief, 20. Top 20. So you go top 20. Top 20. Okay. I was even going to say top 10. Really? Thought about it. Yeah. But top 20 is safer. There's a obviously. lot of good players. There, there is. have a lot of there points is. ahead of him. But and, I think and, the potential is there for if, if, as long as he's And healthy. I don't know what it takes. Like, yeah. if he finishes 10th in a tournament, how much that jumps him. I, I don't know well, enough it's all, about golf. It's all golf based to... on, on – um, we can we can have Brett, our outstanding researcher, yeah. uh, confirm this. But I think it's all based on where you were, the points you had from a year ago, and the points you gained. So the fact that he hasn't competed yeah. in a four a four-round event in over yeah. two years, right. which means every time he does something, he's, he's going to have a up. quantum lead. Going up. And by the way, Brett's putting that in the queue because he's already looking at Blood Moon and Super Moon for us. So we're going to get to that story. In We've a also bit had to mark well. up trademark law. We we yeah. can we get a, just a little shot of Brett right How about there. It? He's doing, working over Brett, there. You're doing good work today, brother. You know what? And, you're doing and he, a lot he, of good work today. And he's happy about doing that because he knows we're leaving town today. He's like, thank God, get these guys <laughs> get out of here. Out of here. Every time we're in the talk back to him, hey Brett, could you find this? Could <laughs> you find this? He's like, really, guys? Do your own work. That's why we sound so smart. Well, that's because we know what's trending. Well done. And we start with the rematch. Canelo Alvarez Triple G is going to be set for May 5th. They fought to that draw in that middleweight championship fight in September. And yes, all the tinfoil hats were saying, I was a draw on purpose. Uh, on purpose. I think either way, we're going to see this one again. It just happened Agreed. to be a draw. Agreed. And, and I'm all in. Yeah. No doubt about it. It, it, it we, And we brought the green, and I brought the question a while, a long time ago, is going to the Mayweather or Conor McGregor buying that fight, will it stop you from buying the others? Now, 
if for those from a money situation, if they can only afford to buy one, then it could. But if you can afford to buy them both, it didn't stop me because I knew one was pure entertainment and one was an actual fight. And Alvarez and Triple G is an actual fight that I'm looking forward to getting again without question. And it will be interesting to me. I, I, I don't know, and I'm not going to ask Brett because we haven't looked it up too much, how many <laughs> buys that had, yeah. you know, how many pay-per-view buys Alvarez and, and Triple G had. Enough to make them want to do it again. Uh, no, I'm, I'm yeah. with you, but I'm just wondering, will this next one equal that? Will it equal the buys, the, the, the pay-per-view buys, less or more? I, I, I wonder where that will go. Okay, as we continue, what's trending? This is important. And I think this is. Because after a huge World Series payday, Better X in terms of... Better X? Is this this Speed Racer and Racer X? This is Better X. This is Undefined Person. Right. We Uh, have Eater X as well. Yes, exactly. And we have T-Rex. Better X is all in on the Eagles. Uh, William Hill uh, on Monday became the second book to report taking a million-dollar bet on the Eagles money line at plus 165 odds. Now, plus 165 odds seems a little confusing. But... Okay, so if you bet $100 and you win it, uh, you get 165 back. Right. Right? Yeah. And that that's the way this that, plays, that's right? right? Okay. I am so bad on the betting thing. I am too. Until, glad until, I don't do it. So your bookie has straightened me out on that, a lot of Thank stuff. you very much. Yep. I don't know what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. MGM reported last week taking a multi-million dollar bet on the Eagles. Multiple sources told ESPN they're all from the same better who went on a winning streak during the World Series that contributed to Nevada's books losing $11.4 million on baseball in November, the book's worst baseball month ever. You think that dude does not want the, the, the casinos to know who he is? That is absolutely correct. <laughs> they find out that he's got some sort of, yeah. they, they won't take his money. His picture's it gonna started, be everywhere. what, at five and a half, the line? Five and a half. I think it's at four, four and a half It's down now? to four, four and a half, Brett? Four? It? Down to four. The uh, line is, a, is at four now. I actually have a quick anecdote about Better X. Okay. So... What apparently happened is that you can't put as, as much money as he wanted to put on at one book. Right, right. And so he would walk into a book, and after a few games, they knew who who he was or that or who his contemporaries were, and he would put uh, a bet down, and then the other books would adjust their line. So Based that they would give bet? him less favorable odds when he went to the next book. Oh, so so he got bet. it at the one book, but the other books would change the line knowing his people were on their way. Yeah, exactly. If it was if there was a, a, a baseball run spread, say it was, you know, whatever, Dodgers minus one and a half. Right. They would change it to minus two at the next book so right. that he would get worse odds. Yeah, because you know he's not doing it. He's got handlers, right? Handlers. He's got runners. Handlers. Yeah. I mean, runners, if you go whatever. by if you if your name is just a, a letter, then I assume you have handlers. <laughs> if yeah. your name is just a letter. Could you be like a, a letter or like better <clears throat> six five two dash five? That would be like really good. Cool, better right? X, that's awesome if that, you're better, better X. Is very good. Because the way, it's what the most yeah. awesome thing is he's winning. Yeah, well, I wonder or how she. much how much of this is from the this one guy, listen to this from ESPN's data, David Purdom. As the United States Supreme Court prepares to release a ruling that could legalize sports betting outside of Nevada, which is really interesting, mm-hmm. the NBA has sort of been on the forefront of that, Americans are expected to bet $4.76 billion on Super Bowl 52 between the Patriots and the Eagles. That's with a B. With $4.76 billion. How much of that do you think is Better X? What do you think Better X's cut is wow. about $4.76 billion? That's amazing. Yeah. Only so, so big only, money being placed on the Eagles. And by the way, only three percent of that wagered on the Super Bowl will take place in Nevada. Yeah. So, <laughs> so again, to this thing of legalizing betting. I mean, you know, it's, let, it's, which and, and this is another thing. We're, it happens we're, in every other country. We're gonna have Roger Goodell on again yeah. on in a bit. We're gonna and, and they're really fighting. They do not want to go down this road yep. and. Just kind of like pro teams finally being in Las Vegas for me that we need to get over this stigma of it yeah and and it's it's happening now i mean my god the, the numbers are three percent in nevada everything else outside of nevada of the 4.76 billion well you're not supposed to be able to do this wow well that's the interesting thing too because look part of the money being raised for the new raider stadium uh comes from a hotel tax yeah what do hotels in vegas have <laughs> casinos and sports yes books. they do so look i get it but uh, it seems to me Everywhere else, I mean, yeah. In the in the UK, for example, you can bet mid match on something, yeah. and now your odds decrease. Find a way to take yeah. advantage of it. Yeah. In, in my eyes, instead of fighting it, yeah. try and take advantage of it. I mean, you can change your bet during the actual tournament if About it's that. going your way or not going your way. You know what? 
I'll start betting heavy, yeah. and I mean heavy, when you can start changing your bet after the match is over. Look, it's it's an interesting dynamic. It's everywhere. A lot, a lot of uh, a did you lot even of players... get that. Yes, I did. Okay, yeah, I did. you just didn't want to. You I... just didn't want to acknowledge it, did you? One hundred percent. Was it correct. that dumb? Was no, it that it... bad? No, it wasn't that bad. Okay, I wasn't really listening. All right. Meanwhile, <laughs> this is really important, I think, for the Jaguars and Blake Bortles. Um, Blake wow. Bortles has surgery on his throwing wrist. Yes, he did. Now, the injury, a small tear, actually dates back to the 2016 season. But Bortles had been managing the pain by getting the injections. Mm-hmm. However, the injections became less effective, so he's going to get off-season surgery and expected to make a full recovery. And, Mike, when we say full recovery, yep. there's a lot he's going to recover so because of this surgery. He's He's due $19 million next year if... He is on Jacksonville's roster on the first day of the league year, which is March 14th. I March believe. 14th. So March 14th is the beginning of the new league year. If he's on the roster, then he is guaranteed $19 million. He just had surgery. You know what teams can't do after you have surgery and you're not 100%? Cut you. They can't cut you. So we had surgery. So do we think between now and March 14th, He's going to be cleared 100% from his surgery. I'm going to say no. I'm going to say no as well, which means 19 mil kicks in that he's guaranteed. Then what happens? Well, then that's, I mean, see, listen, that's the interesting question. If what? you don't want him as your quarterback. We saw yeah. Brock Osweiler get traded with all that for 16 mil to the Cleveland Browns, and we saw how well that worked out. Some are going to... They, they, you owe him nineteen million dollars. Some are going to trade for nineteen million dollars because I still don't think they want him to be the quarterback there next year. But do you, do you get your hand forced by this? And if you're paying Blake Bortles a one year contract at nineteen point four million dollars or nineteen point oh five three, whatever 19. it is, nineteen 05. mil, you're yeah, pretty nineteen safe. million dollars. Yeah. The question then becomes, how does that hamper your ability to spend a lot of money on another quarterback? Right. Exactly because right. That I'm pretty sure all of that nineteen rolls into the cap because it's it's a one year contract. <laughs> right. I mean, you, that you, I don't think there's any way you can offset that. If it's only one year left, then now. What you can do is try and rework that deal. Right. Where say, hey, we'll extend you with the idea of not really extending you, which would give him a two or three year deal. You can roll a lot of that lump sum into a, into a signing bonus, which would lessen the cap impact for 2018, which then you could use some of that money to go get, I don't know, let's say a trade for Alex Smith. Why would, why would, you would have to really entice Blake because why would he change anything? Yeah, he's well, he, nineteen mil for a year, and then I, he could be I, a free agent. I, but I, yes, the, that that's the part. Because yeah. I think I think that you could you could make up the money to him uh, by right. by putting it in the bonus. As long but, as you make up the money to him, yeah. But, but you're right. There will be other issues about whether or not he's going to have free agency at yep. the end of, at the yep. end of the twenty. Exactly season. right. So it's exactly he's right. going to have to want to play along a little bit. Yeah, unless there's some you know the funky numbers in here that that we just don't know about. It yeah, seems, we'll get Brett on that. Yeah, yeah. Well, somebody, well, somebody smarter Brett, than do us. Do math. Yeah, do math, Brett. Yeah. He got better X and all that kind of mm-hmm. stuff. He can figure that out. We still do have to get to the uh, blue moon, harvest we do. moon, super, super moon, moon, blue moon, blood moon, moon, all that stuff. Yeah. Solar eclipse of the heart. Yeah, that Bonnie Tyler. There you go. go. Yeah, uh, nicely, nice, mm-hmm. nice pull. Every 90, every every one my son Mike says he's going what ninety percent of our audience is like what are those well, what, guys what do you, talking what do you about? Say? But we'll get to it. We know what we should be talking about now <clears throat> what? as as uh, what's trending is over. Let's sound off on Super Bowl's opening okay. night. All right, uh, it's brought to you by ADT. Considering home security, consider this. For 140 years, ADT has helped stop more crime than any other home security company. Visit ADT.com to learn more. Now, up until, what, three years ago, uh, the teams arrived Sunday or Monday at the Super City, and then they had media day on Tuesday or Wednesday. Yeah. Tuesday, I think it was. Tu- it, oh, it was Tuesday. Tuesday. It was Tuesday. absolutely Tuesday. How much happier do you think the players are to get it done Monday absolutely. night? Absolutely. Have to be just a now... Um, Philly got here Sunday, and they got to tour the Mall of America. They went around the Mall of America, which we'll be doing probably later on today. New England got in yesterday, and it's great. You get in, boom, you go do that thing last night, and you're done. It's over. You're done. I think that's fantastic to get it over It's called Super Bowl opening night now, and they they parade. I think it started at Super Bowl 50, Uh uh, because it was the golden anniversary of the Super Bowl in San Mm -hmm. Francisco and all that stuff, but they they have it as a nighttime event. They Mm -hmm. have the guys out there. They parade them. They wave down at the Minions and the massive horde of... Media people down there and uh-huh. the crazy people as well. And then they go to their podiums and they talk. Uh, fashion statements were in vain, in vogue last yes, night. Yes, they were. Including Patriots head coach Bill Belichick, who got off the plane wearing a fedora. Yes, he did. And uh, for a guy that normally dresses in a hood and cut off uh, sh- uh, sleeves on a, on a sweatshirt, <laughs> this was a change. Yes, it was. A radical departure. A good look. So obviously, Bill Belichick was asked about his fedora. 
I saw you at the hangar, Coach, and you look dapper. I'm talking like GQ-ish, and I see Linda over there smiling. Does she have anything to do with the wardrobe? Yeah, she might have a little bit to do with it. Uh, that was my dad's hat, so I thought I'd just toss that one on today. and uh, So I felt good about wearing it. So Minnesota's a good place to have a hat, so did the trick. Okay, wow. there's a lot to get into there. But, but, but what, what, yeah. what, so anybody wanting to goof around or have a good time with that, Bill yes. just chilled him on that one saying it's his dad's hat. Exactly. Here's yeah. the deal. Yeah. Uh, his dad passed away in 2005. Right. So the last Super Bowl his dad saw him win was Super Bowl 39. Which was? Against the Philadelphia Eagles. Yes, it was. Uh, and there's that great shot of both Bill and his dad mm-hmm. getting dumped, the Gatorade dumped right. on him. Yep. And his dad's like, whoa, I didn't see that coming. Yeah. So he's trying to channel as much good What karma. a great moment, though. Absolutely. I, what, what a great reason. Where, where are your dad's head? Yeah, that you is know what? so cool. You know what? This worked out the last time, Dad. You were here, yeah. and that was the last time you saw me win, so I'm going to have you here Very with me cool. again. Really, really neat thing. Wearing that hat. Yeah. Uh, also making a fashion statement, as he always does. Uh-huh. Tom Brady showed up wearing... Two gloves again. Yes, he did. I guess he still doesn't want people to see yeah, what's going on I mean, there. Come on. We know the hand's the not hand going to be an fine. issue. The it's stitches are already issue. out, so it's not going to be an issue. The stitches are out. Maybe right. he just didn't want to see the scar. Yeah. I get it. You know, But he wore the, he wore the uh, gloves again mm-hmm. one more time. But he was also asked about the controversy that started right. over the weekend when a, a uh, radio host, host yeah. WEI made some disparaging comments about his, his five-year-old daughter. <laughs> Uh, and then he cut his radio interview that he does every Monday during the season with WEI very short and say, I'm going to have to rethink whether I'm going to talk to you guys again. That that reporter, by the way, has been suspended indefinitely. He's yeah. not at Super Bowl week, and, and, and he is not working there for uh, until they figure out what they're going to do with him. Right. And so obviously, <laughs> because of the way Tom handled the interview Monday morning on WEI, it came up and Tom was asked about the radio host uh, who made that disparaging remark about his daughter. Well, I I think, you know, we all have careers and we all, you know, make mistakes. And, I mean, I'd hate for someone to have to change their life over something like that. That was certainly not what he intended. I, and have you thought about whether you'll go back on the station or is that something you'll deal with in time? Yeah, I haven't thought about it. I've been thinking about this game and, yeah. It's something so out of out of football but yeah. still for a guy with power. Because, listen, if Tom Brady got up there and said, you know what, I'll go back on that station, if that guy's not working there anymore, yeah. what do you think would happen? Or he'd say, you know, I'll go back on that station, I understand it was a mistake, either way, then I think we'd have a clear indication of what's going to happen. Right. Uh, the fact that he's leaving open? But, but I mean, I, I mean, to the point of, of the, the reporter. Right. I'm saying when he said, I don't want to, or, or the, the, the talk shows, I don't want somebody to have to change their life over this. Like I said... Tom would have the power to do that, right? Yes. Tom could say, I'll come back and do that show if that guy doesn't work there anymore, and that guy would not be working there anymore. And Tom is saying, if you want to say to, to his credit, because there may be that some people that said, screw the guy for saying that about my kid, because this went beyond a, a, an athlete or any type. Of, this was a parent. As we all heard that remark, and as a parent, we all cringed and said, wait a minute, this guy's talking about a five-year-old kid? Just Are you a, serious? It's just not a place you so want to forget go. it that it's a quarterback. It's it's a father hearing somebody say that about their kid. So nobody was shocked at his reaction, but him there saying, "Listen, I don't want to cost the guy his job. I don't want to have to make a lifestyle change because of one day." You know, you're on the air long enough. You say something dumb. You know, example one right here. You know, I've been here a long time, and I've said more than the stupid things in my life. not not like that. I'll no, say, but no. but you do. And and to Tom's credit, he said, "Listen, we all." Say something maybe we regret, and I would imagine it's something that this guy regrets, but he doesn't want him to lose his job over it. Well, But again, I think Tom really, when he wants to, if because this is an indefinite suspension, and I don't know how, how long that's going to play right. out, because uh, we've seen what some indefinite suspensions last a game. What was that, Grayson Allen's indefinite suspension last year was a game, I think it was? <clears throat> Not very indefinite. No. Um, the idea, Tom could decide this either way. Really, I mean, not you could say I won't go back on until he's on there until he's not on the station, or you yeah. could say, yeah, you know what, I'll come back on. I understand he'd probably be back. So right. Either way, I think yeah. Tom is holding. Uh, Alex Reamer is, is the guy's name. Oh, I, I think without w- without yeah. a doubt, I yeah. I think Tom, in all honesty, Tom saying I don't want to cost the guy's job. I, I don't think they're going to fire him. I, I think I think Tom just kind of. Gave him life. Exactly. You know what I mean? Throw, <laughs> throw him on high. Threw, threw him a bone. <laughs> and then on the Philly side, of course, they're there because Carson Wentz had the great season, but Nick Foles is the quarterback now, and he had an NFC championship game for the ages, and he said the Eagles are right where they're comfortable being, and that would be the underdog. 
I mean, I, I'm pretty sure we are underdogs in this game. Um, and that, that's just sort of been, I mean, but that's Philadelphia. I mean, it, it's fitting. And, you know, we, we, it goes back to, you know, we're focused on the locker room. We're focused on the guys in the locker room. We know that through every injury, through everything everyone's gone through this year, everyone just said Philly can't do it. We, we hear it. We get it. I get asked questions every week about it. But that's where it goes back to all these other questions. Like, we focus on each other. What matters is that locker room, the coaching staff, the people that are in the NovaCare facility, which is where we practice. That's what matters. And, and look, he's he's doing this exactly right. Sports Center put up an amazing graphic last night, Co- including playoffs. They compared Foles with Wentz. You ready for this? Uh, Win loss: Foles nineteen and eleven. Wentz eighteen and eleven. Completion percentage over their careers: Foles sixty two percent. Wentz sixty two percent. Touchdown to interception ratio: Foles fifty two touchdowns, eighteen interceptions. Wentz forty nine touchdowns, twenty one interceptions. QBR: Foles sixty one. Wentz sixty. Finkel is Einhorn. And you know what? And they had a Foles decision. Foles is Wentz. And let's go back to how many people invest big time in their backup quarterback. Yeah. All right? So this goes back to the beginning of the season. Jeffrey Lurie saying, we utilized $12 million to have a second quarterback, and it may have seemed irrational, but I remember the phone call I had with my GM, and I said, we have an opportunity to do this. Do you have any reservations of using $12 million this way versus another position? And we both agreed it was absolutely the right thing to do. How about that decision if it went the other way? Yeah. Now nah, you know what? We're not, not not spending 12 mil on a backup quarterback. They decided to, and it's bailing them out right now. Look, so many times, yeah, so many times the guy that doesn't play might be the most important guy on your team because if you need him to play, right. he can do what Nick Foles exactly does. exactly right. He, I mean, Nick Foles has done something that only Joe Montana has done in postseason history. Back-to-back games completing over 75% of his throws. Listen. The it, list is Nick Foles yeah. and Joe Montana. It's insurance. You pay yeah. a high premium for insurance, yeah. and you hope you never need it. Exactly. Hope you never need it. But if you do, it can come in handy for you. It's like when we uh, went, lost power in that October 11th, yeah. 2011 snowstorm. I bought the biggest generator I could yeah. find to yeah. power a city block in yeah. New York. It's only come on once. One time. But knowing that it's, it's there, there, so it's much better. Yep. All right, coming up, another Woj bomb, a stunner. Blake Griffin shipped to Detroit. So where are the Clippers going to send DeAndre and Lou Williams? And is it all in for LeBron? Is that their plan? Uh, we'll ask Woj when he joins us in studio. So what he does, he drops the bomb as the Gap Band. Uh, who knew all those years ago that the Gap Band was singing about our NBA That's insider, Adrian Wojnarowski, dropping another bomb before the deadline last night as he's with us now on Golik and Wingo on ESPN Radio and ESPN2, presented by Progressive Insurance. And slowly, I say, uh-huh. all phone guests join us on the Shell Pencil Performance Line. Adrian inside the studio to bring us the straight talk by Straight Talk Wireless. Best phones, best networks, no contracts. So that song, Gap Band, brought back some memories for you, right? The parking lot at Bristol Pizza over on West Street in Bristol, <laughs> where we used to hang out in maybe junior high, high school. I don't How know about what year. That? That's what I think of with that wow. song. Wow. Gap yeah. Band, drop a bomb on me. <laughs> there you go. It and had you, no connotation other than. Yeah. And, you, and, and now we use it in reference to you with all, all the info you yeah. get. Yeah. Uh, I think that, uh, I think that song is very appropriate. That yeah. should be your ringtone. That should be his ringtone. Uh, I, don't, I don't think so. I th- <laughs> well, he's like, shut up. Stop well, I mean, let, let's let's be honest. I mean, outside mm-hmm. uh, of you and I'm sure some others, who saw this one coming? I mean, I know I didn't. All of a sudden, I'm watching Sports Center and you're on the phone going, Blake Griffin's traded. I'm like, why are you kidding me? What what led to this? Uh, the the Clippers and Pistons talked about a week ago for the first time about this deal, and it didn't go anywhere until. Sunday evening is when it started to get serious and it started to move quickly. The Pistons, I mean, they have, they've really been in a free fall almost out of the Eastern Conference playoff, um, top eight and they were motivated to get a deal done. And the Clippers didn't expect, they didn't know whether they would trade Blake Griffin if the right deal would come along. They certainly had been very focused on DeAndre Jordan, Lou Williams. But this was a deal for them that made sense, and and both sides wanted to move fast on it. I I, I have to add because I kind of feel like almost the Brock Osweiler deal when it went from Houston to Cleveland, and, and people are going, Cleveland did that, and Houston are going, oh my god, we got rid of that money. It, it was that the same way in the Clippers. Were, were there any feeling of wow, they actually took the deal and took all that money on in, in Detroit? Well, I don't think it was so much that somebody would take Blake Griffin. I think there was and and. Would have been tremendous interest in him, but you know, is you know, Trey said going into the break, thirty-five million, thirty-nine million dollar annual right. salaries coming. 
Uh, it does lock them in with he and Drummond and, and their payroll, but they wanted a star in Detroit. And for a couple of reasons, one, they haven't had that kind of veteran grown up superstar. They can't get a Blake Griffin in free agency and right. they haven't drafted one. And they saw an opportunity in Detroit to get a star and don't underestimate the importance of Blake Griffin as a ticket seller. They've got this big, beautiful new arena in downtown Detroit. It really is nice. And, and it's, it's not been full. Like, okay. not even close. And so, Blake <clears throat> sells tickets. He always has done that. That's part of it, but this is an all-in move for Stan Van Gundy and their regime. They've got to get in the playoffs, and they've got to show some progress here. All right, ESPN NBA insider Adrian Wojnarowski in with us talking about the Blake Griffin trade. It's interesting. The Clippers and the Pistons are really in the same spot right now. They're both one, they're both one slot out of, right. of the playoffs right now. The Clippers are half game back of the Nuggets. Uh, the Pistons are two and a half games back of the Sixers for the eighth slot. Does this trade, in your opinion, give them enough to get a push and get into the playoff picture? Well, yes. And I think Blake, the question with Blake's going to be health. And he had the injury early this season. He has played well since coming back. And when he's healthy, when he's on the floor, he's going to really help that Detroit team. They hope that, you know, he has played with DeAndre Jordan, they thought is sort of a relative facsimile to Andre Drummond. And he's played with a big center. Uh, He's not in this league, a four-man who can go play the five. He can't really defend that position as well. He's a four-man, and he'll play that position in Detroit. And then for the Clippers, it gives them a chance now. They want to rebuild on the fly. They want to reshape the franchise. They don't want to drop They don't want to drop into the lottery. They, now, listen, they may miss the playoffs here this year, next year, but they don't want to gut this roster. They want to now bring in younger players and draft picks to start reshaping this as they go. But Steve Ballmer doesn't want to... He doesn't want to tank, and this is the hard way to rebuild in the NBA. So, so let me go one more in Detroit before we to move out, mm-hmm. out to LA. Is this where some teams are now? Of course, you everybody's you want to win a championship, but also you see out there we're not winning a championship. So let's do what we need to to be relevant and sell tickets. Is that because your Drummond and and Blake are going to be what sixty seventy mil uh, for the next few years of your of your. A roster. So is that where teams are now? Let's find a way to be somewhat relevant and have a guy that people talk about and sell tickets. Well, I, I think in Detroit, given they have not had a, a star player there in a long time, uh, a, a really a cornerstone guy, uh, they get that in Blake Griffin. Uh, but this is a team, Stan Van Gundy's run here, there's pressure to make the playoffs and there's pressure now to not just make it, mm. but um, maybe advance around, maybe have, you know, become at least a middle tier Eastern Conference team that, that's relevant. And, uh, for them, they can't get a second team all NBA type player, uh, through free agency. Like they, they did this in a smaller and, and they've got a player in Griffin now who signed, he signed a five year deal this right. summer. They did this with Tobias Harris a few years ago. He was one year into a four year deal. And so you're getting guys with years to go on their contract who you kind of have under control now going forward. And, and it's, it's a, it's a bit of a risky play for the Pistons again because of Blake's injury history. But listen, when he's healthy, tremendous player and the kind of veteran guy to sort of try to lead the way with a younger group trying to figure it out that they haven't had. In Detroit, kind of trying to fit in with yeah. the forwards of today and shooting threes. Right, he's, he's doing that a lot, a lot more. This year, yeah. But to your point about the Pistons needing to sell tickets, they're filling about eighty-three percent of their available seats. Only the Hawks are worse. So this is this is a this is a drive to get people to be interested in the team again. Yeah. And then on the Clippers side, where do the next pieces fall? Where does DeAndre go? Where does Lou Williams go? I mean, where, what do we think is happening before the deadline, which is a week from Thursday? Well, after the Clippers made the trade yesterday, they thought that they would step back for a day or two, let the dust settle a little bit on this deal, and and kind of reboot um, what's out there for Williams, for Jordan. They they didn't love the trade market they had for DeAndre Jordan in this first go-around. I think there's a little pressure off of them now in the DeAndre deal by getting Blake done. They got two young younger players. Tobias Harris is a young player still. Um, Avery Bradley is you know, closer to 30, and he'll be a free agent this summer. But that first round pick now they get from uh Detroit will certainly have value. Now, if you're the Clippers, you say, okay, if we can get a f- first round pick for DeAndre Jordan and we can get one for Lou Williams, we already have two this year, our own in Detroit's. Now maybe they get a pick that carries over into next year. They have a chance to they could have four first round picks in this coming draft if they got first for these two, 
Now, those deals could include protections that push a first rounder in 2019, but now they've got draft picks and a chance to get something they don't have in this organization, and that's good young players. They, they, they hit on a couple second round picks, some two way contract players who played hard for them this year, but they need to start again. They need to start again to get some cornerstone young guys in the organization. And, and that's what their goal is over the next year or two. And then try to be a player again in free agency, maybe 2019, 2020. So, and, and let's go to free agency, but not 19 or 20. This summer, the biggest name out there, obviously LeBron James. What, what are realistic teams, you know, because we want to put them everywhere. Hell, Trey had the idea, and I agree. You want to you want to uh, be the best team out of the East and get a surefire <laughs> road to play Golden State? You should go to Boston. <laughs> put LeBron in Boston. Let's figure out a way to get him in I'm Green. I'm just saying he picked Kyrie uh, Irving for the All-Star look game. At the I'm just saying. Group, that would be is, a bunch of six, seven, six, eight guys is gonna, everywhere. Is he going to take the veteran minimum contract? <laughs> yeah, in I, I, like, he needs more money. Uh, no, so, no, no. so, but but in a realistic sense, I mean, because people want to put LeBron everywhere to say, this will fit here, this, this will fit here. Are, are there, in your mind, legitimate contenders for him? Unfortunately, for the first time in a long time, I'm starting to think of what's going on in Cleveland. Mm -hmm. He may really want to get the hell out of there, and I certainly don't want him to go as a guy born and raised in Cleveland. But are there, in your mind, legitimate teams out there that are that, that can make that run? There are, and, and remember this too. Teams who don't have salary cap space now, if there's a chance to get LeBron, they can go out and create it. They can make deals. Houston is an example of that. Now, uh you know, they can go out with Ryan Anderson. Now, Ryan Anderson's contract, $20 million a year. That's tough to move. They had trouble last summer when they tried to do, to move it. But it's one thing to try to move it for Carmelo Anthony to create space. It's another thing to try to do it for LeBron. Now you are going to attach a first round pick or maybe a first and a second, whatever it takes to get that contract off to help mm -hmm. create space because it's LeBron James. Um, but again, teams who may not look like they're in position to do it now, if they feel like there's a chance, if he has an interest, well, they'll go out and do it for LeBron. And so that always opens up the market beyond what you're looking at right now. But Cleveland, listen, they're preparing for the chance, the fact that he may very well leave. They had, I was told, uh, most of their front office was at that Alabama, um, Oklahoma, Oklahoma, Oklahoma game. Right. I think almost their whole organization, including uh, maybe even ownership, went down to take a look at that Trey Young, mm -hmm. uh, Colin Sexton battle there. They're not looking to move that draft pick, and and without moving that Brooklyn they can't pick, unless they no, know. they can't. Yeah. And without moving that Brooklyn pick, they don't really have a chance to improve themselves right. at the deadline to be to get in to the conversation of being able to compete with Golden State. And even if they did, yeah. they're not one player away from anything. Right. Clearly, yeah. LeBron is going to be the centerpiece of what's going to be a crazy NBA offseason again. The trade deadline is coming up again a week from Thursday. Adrian Wojnarowski. Last question before we run out of time here. With the injury to Boogie Cousins, what does that do for his contract status for next year? And might that make Anthony Davis available now that it looks like whatever they were trying to get together with those two in New Orleans probably isn't going to happen? They, they don't want to make Anthony Davis available. They're going to keep building around him. They still think they can make the playoffs. They'd still like to improve their roster. They don't have a lot of assets to do deals with. It'll make Cousins' free agency really interesting. How other teams approach that injury, how, how the Pelicans approach it, I think it helps the incumbent when there's an injury because you know you have them every day your doctors have access you're watching the rehab i think it's easier for the team to keep him versus somebody else to come in and sign an injured player to a multi-year deal right. so i thought all along that the pelicans had a very good chance of re-signing him and now whether it's a full four or five year deal whether they do like a one plus one with the injury that's going to play out over the rehab here in the next few months. Woj, you're the best. Appreciate you joining us. Thanks, guys. Uh, Adrian Wojnarowski, ESPN NBA Insider. LeBron to Philly and all the cheesesteaks you can eat. I'm down. He'll break that story in like three months. Think of food uh, Coming now. up, something's <laughs> going to happen tomorrow that hasn't happened in over 150 years. We'll tell you about that next. Golgan and Wingo with you this morning. Again, coming up in the next hour, 8 o'clock, Commissioner Roger Goodell of the NFL will join us. We'll talk about what we expect to hear out of him in his mm -hmm. State of the League address, which he'll uh, give tomorrow in Minneapolis, which, by the way, will be aired or will be happening during the same time as NFL Live is on the air. So you can see uh, that interview and that uh, co press conference with Roger Goodell live on NFL Live, but we'll have him here at just uh, after 8 o'clock to talk about uh, what to expect in that uh, speech in the State of the Union or State of the League address. Meanwhile... It's a big day because we're heading to Minneapolis. Yes, it is. And there's something else that's yep. going to happen that hasn't happened in a century and a half. It's a big week. Uh, you can get an early uh, jump on this uh, tomorrow. We're getting the possibility of a triple threat, a supermoon, 
blue moon, and lunar eclipse all coming to a sky near you this week. Now, a super all in the same day, say that all together supposedly. Okay. Right. A super moon, a blue moon, total eclipse. How rare is the event? Even without the super moon, it's the first blue moon total lunar total lunar eclipse in the U.S. since March of eighteen sixty six. Whoa! So just after the Civil War. There you go. So what are these things? Yes, can, blue, can you can you okay. break it down for me? Here's what a blue moon is. Yep. A blue moon occurs about every two and a half years. All right. It's what it is is basically just another term for a second full moon in a single calendar month. January's first full moon was January 1st, so we're going to get another one January 31st. So because we got two in yep. the same month, it's that's a called moon. a blue moon. And we just sneak it in on the 1st and the 31st. Sneak it in. Okay. I think we all know what a lunar eclipse is. Yes. Okay. A lunar eclipse is going to last for about three and a half hours, beginning uh, of the partial phase at 3.48 a.m. Pacific time until it ends 7.12 a.m. Pacific time. Um, and then we have the full moon, the full moon uh, on a dark will take on the dark reddish appearance during the eclipse. So it's also described as a blood moon. Okay. And then what is a super moon? Okay. Now, because remember, that's the trifecta here. A super moon occurs when the full moon is at the closest point of the orbit to the earth, basically making it look really big and really bright. So when you look at that full moon and go, wow. That is really big and really bright. That's called a supermoon. So you get a supermoon, a blue moon, which is another full moon two times in a month. But the blue moon, the second time, will be a supermoon. Throw in the lunar eclipse, and you got the trifecta. And you got a blood moon in there somewhere too, right? Well, it's because the the full moon takes well the full moon takes on a dark reddish appearance during the eclipse. So another phrase used is it's a blood moon. Okay, I, I uh, didn't catch all that. Can you repeat that for me? No, absolutely not. <laughs> I, I think we may have just set a record for using the word moon most in a radio segment. Blue moon, two moons, yeah. two full moons in a month. Moon. Super moon means that second full moon that we're going to get is bigger than normal because it's mm-hmm. closer to the Earth. Yeah. And lunar eclipse, we know what that is. Can you just say moon one more time? Moon. Thank you. You keep going, I'm going to moon you. <laughs> Please then stop. For God's that sake, moon? stop. Yeah, that's not Woo! the moon we want. But Got what we do want you. next, NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell will join us. Give us sneak peek of his State of the League address that's coming up tomorrow in Minneapolis.